There's a young adult conference that we joined together with a couple other churches on the Inland Empire. And one of the things that we found is that there are very few resources, you can say, that really reach to the demographics of 20s and early 30s. And so what we did is we said, okay, well, let's try to come together and put on a conference that we can deal with different issues and different topics that many of us are dealing with and really need to seek prayer about and instruction. So we had it last year. Who came last year? I think I want to say about two or three came last year that were here. And so, I mean, awesome. What? Came to what? The conference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And so I don't know. I mean, it was awesome. So I really want to encourage you to take a day. I always like to consider these type of things like like a retreat. If you take our relationships, period. In relationships, when you were first in that relationship, you know, you were kind of giggly. And you couldn't, you loved talking to each other. You would be texting each other all the time and, and doing little notes and doing all kinds of things. But as that relationship goes on, it begins, that begins to change. And the relationship becomes monotonous. And what you have to do is you have to keep that relationship fresh. And so you have to kind of go out on dates. Even though you might have been married for 10 years, you still got to go out on dates. You have to keep that relationship fresh. You have to do little getaways. And it's the same thing when it comes to God. We make the mistake sometimes by allowing our relationship with God to become routine. Sunday after that, I go to church, go to Sunday school. I'm okay, I'm going to be at church. I'm going to praise. All right. And then I go home. Oh, Sunday, go to church, Sunday school, praise, go to church. All right, go home. And then it becomes routine. And we have to break up that routine to keep it fresh. And so... Chris would say, go to the mountain. That's how you do a little retreat. You and God and keep it fresh. Or you go to conferences. And you, you just break break it up a little bit and keep it fresh. And, and um, it will really bless you. And so one of our goals was to make this as inexpensive as possible. We make it as powerful as possible. And so it's only $20. Uh, I don't know too many conferences that you can go to. For twenty dollars, and we're gonna feed you breakfast, lunch, and we have you have the choice of two different breakout sessions and a keynote speaker. So you're gonna get fed spiritually. You will really walk away refreshed. And so uh, I do have registration forms. If anybody would like to register today, you can register online. Um, so we'll, we'll have these here, and I'll have some of the registration forms here afterwards. If you would like to. Uh, Register now, and then kind of get it out of the way, so that it's your option if you'd rather register now or if you do it online. Uh, with that said, we have, I have been blessed to, to be here, and I know that this is the close of... Um, One more, next Thursday. But I'm not here next Thursday. Oh yeah, it's close for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a close for me, so. And so, uh, it's, it's been a blessing to, to be here. I, I hope that um, maybe next uh, quarter or next semester that um, you guys will have me back. Yeah. And hopefully we can finish, because there's actually uh, about seven parts to the series wire. And so I, I'm going to the third part. And uh, But one of the things that God really put on my heart in this series wire is just that we live in a different time. And in this time, there's different things, different distractions, different techniques that um, Satan uses to distract us and to, to get us off track. And so one of the things that I always like to, to point out is if you go back five years ago, who was really texting? Was there even Facebook three years ago? I don't, I don't, I don't know how, how old it is now. But we have different technologies, different things that are impacting our world, and if we don't look at them and see how they might be impacting our relationship, then it might be something that is hindering our relationship. And, and so what we did is we really started off light the first week, and we were talking about a tug of war. And what ends up happening is we are the world. We are being stretched thin because we have God on this side who wants our attention and saying, hey, 
You need to place me first in your life. And you need to put me first. And you need to give me your adoration and your devotion. But then we have school over on this side. We have relationships over on this side. We have Facebook on this side. Internet on this side. Web game, whatever it might be, sports. All these other things on this side. And we're being fooled. And so we talked about how everything has its place. School has its place. And God has his place. And if we're not careful to make sure that we put things in their place and we put God in his place, then we can get caught up in idol worship. Amen. And so we talked about that and we went through the first and second commandment. And then last week we talked about balance. It's one thing to say, okay, oh God, I'm going to keep you first in my life, but I'm going to put you here. But it's another thing to begin to live it because what ends up happening is life happens. And as life happens, things change. Circumstances change. How many of us have had a plan and that plan just didn't work out the way we had envisioned? Yeah. That's called life. And so what ends up happening is we have good intentions, but it doesn't seem to happen right because we get in overload. And that's one of the things that Satan does is our lives are in overload. Our plate is full. Whether or not we did it or whatever it might be, our plate is full. And so we're trying to put God in His place, but we just have too much going on. And so we talked about how do we keep balance. And one of the things that God blessed us with, that sometimes we overlook, that helps us to keep balance, is a measuring stick. What was that measuring stick, anybody? A Sabbath rest. God said, I want you to rest. And one of the things that for us today in the 21st century, I want us to understand what that means is basically we need to unplug. We're plugged in to too many different things, and God's saying, once a week, you got six days to handle your business. Six days to do what you need to do, homework, work, relate, whatever you got to do, you got six days to do it. And I want you to take one day that you unplug. And for some of us, we just need to unplug our phone, turn them off. Why no? I got, I got so much. I mean, who, who's going? How they going to get in touch with me? Can you imagine? I mean, what 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 happened like ten years ago when you know it's just hey, I, I just have to wait till I got home and check the message. I had a beeper. I don't say I had a beeper. I don't say I had a beeper. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I had a beeper. Like fifteen years ago, oh my. <laughs> or twenty years ago. You no, know, I hate you, but you know. Right, know. right. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about balance yeah. and just how we need to unplug. We need to just unplug from our computers a little bit. We need to unplug from schoolwork. How many of us just find ourselves just constantly in our books? We need to unplug. We need to unplug from the internet. We're just constantly on Facebook, constantly just trying to see what's going on, constantly checking this website, constantly looking at this. We need to un- There's nothing wrong with those things, but God said we need to unplug so we can rest and find refuge. And I'm sorry, but two hours on a Sunday is not unplugged. Yeah. And so we talked about that last week. How many of us were able to do, how many of us were able to look and look at our schedules and try to better place in our lives a rest, a day, a 24-hour period that we can just rest, focus on the Lord, meditate. If we get things done, we get it done. If we don't, we're not going to worry about it. How many of us were able to do that? How did how, that work out? I mean, it's just tough. I mean, it's tough. I'm, I'm not saying that all oh, you're going to hell and, and, and because you didn't actually establish the rest. That, that's not, remember, we're not under that law. We're under a new covenant. But God still gave it to us to bless us because He understands how we're structured. And He understands that we need to rest. Otherwise, our bodies will break down. And we need to detach. We need to unplug. So that way we can better hear from God. God has a word for each and every one of us. But sometimes we just have too much noise. We can't hear God until we come. That's good. Today, one of the things I want us to deal with is people. You cannot get away from them. (laughs) They're everywhere. And in this 21st century, people are around us more than ever. People have a connection to you, even if you like it or not. <laughs> people are in your business, and it's like, because that's just where everything is. Right now, if, if five people wanted to get in touch with me, they can't. And all of a sudden, people can read up on your history. I can see pictures of you. I don't even know you. I can just look and see five pictures of you. 
See, we are so interconnected connected with people nowadays that we have what is called our, our social web. I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about far beyond the internet. When you talk about social, we're talking about people that we are connected to, people that we talk to. And so it can be at school, the people in your classroom, look, or even right now, you look around, we are, this is our social network. And I put a web up here because what ends up happening is in this social web, it's like it's something that you can't get out of. And so we have this social web where we are connected to so many different people. And how do we walk? How do we stay focused on Christ and our purpose in this 21st century as we are in this social web? One of the things that I think we miss sometimes is that in our social web that we are representing Christ before people. No matter where we are at, no matter what we are doing, we represent Christ in this 21st century. Look at what Matthew said. Jesus says, you are the light, what? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So here it is. Can you imagine right now if the lights were just underneath the chairs, if we put lights on the floors? You just have them underneath the chairs. How, how would that work? <laughs> would it really help? They're not serving. It doesn't serve a purpose if it's underneath something because the light is meant to be what? High. Yeah. So it can illuminate. Amen. That's good. It's already shining. But we are here before the people. I really like this because it says, you are. Who are you? A lot of times people say, well, I am. I'm a boss. <laughs> but no, that's not who you are. Well, you know, well, I, I, I'm a lawyer. No, well, that's not who you are. And so we get caught up in that because society has said, well, depending on what your status is in society, that's who you are. If you're rich, that's who you are. If you're poor, that's who you are. But we forget when we gave our lives to Christ that we have a new, cre uh, new we are a new creation in Him. Amen. And who we are has changed. Our stature has changed because we are now children of God. And Jesus is directly telling each and every one of us that we all, whether you like it or not, we are the light of the world. Amen. Come on. I get the same tag. Because I want you to put them on. So go ahead and Let take your name tag. And I want you to put it on. Because as we are the light of the world, that means we are representing Christ in the world. We take the name of God with us wherever we go. When you go home, you take the name of God with you. When you're in class, you take the name of God with you. Wherever we are, we take the name of God with us. And so Jesus just said back here, he said, let your light so shine that they may see who? So people are going to be looking at you when they see your good works. They're going to point to who? God. And so we carry this name with us wherever we go. We are representatives of God. One of the things I really like about this that God really told me is there are no timeouts. This ain't basketball. This isn't a sports where it's like, okay, timeout, hold on. I, 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 I really want to curse this person out. This man is working out. Lord, did I hear him? Just time, it's just time out. Just, just time out. I need, I need to tell her all. I need to tell her all. There are no timeouts from representing God. Do we? But it's, that's really tough sometimes. Because sometimes we want a timeout. Sometimes we want a vacation. Lord, I'm, I'm just tired. How many of us have ever just been tired? I'll be the first one to remind you. Just tired. It's like this walk is tiring. Do I always have to be this person all the time? And that can get frustrating. That can be tiring where you just want to just quit sometimes because I just want to, I just want to get away. I just don't want people to see you. I just be invisible. But there are no vacations. Because it's who we are. Have you ever been misrepresented? Anybody? I'm misrepresented. 
Uh, just I've had, I've had people uh, introduce me like uh, you know it's like kind of that uh, that disingenuous introduction. Oh, this is my my name is David. This is my friend David, and oh he's uh, he's so this. But it's like they're they're actually making fun of you. Mm -hmm. Like 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 look at his shoes. He's such a nice dresser, you know. But it's kind of, it's kind of distant, yeah. Like, what is one uh, big thing about being misrepresented? Something. Like that. Huh? It's not you, okay? And here's one: you're not in control. You're not in control of how people are representing you. That's the whole thing about being misrepresented. That means people are representing you, but they're doing it in a fashion that is really not representing you. But you can't control them and stop them. And so you're not in control. You're being misrepresented. Wow. And so God is saying, hold on. God demands genuine representation. So as we have the name of God, and as we carry the name of God, and as we are a light in this world, and God is saying, hey, I want you to represent me correctly. Don't misrepresent me. Wow. Look what it says here in the third commandment. We went over the first two commandments. Then last week we went over the fourth commandment. Here is the third commandment. Um, the first four commandments deal with our relationship with God. And that's where, that's always a good starting point. That's where we have to start at, is our relationship with God. And as I was talking about staying focused, but look at what it says here in the third commandment, Exodus 20. It says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. One of the things that, um, when I heard this and, and read this, because this is something that you hear um, as as a young man, as a young woman, you, you hear this. And uh, whenever I heard this, I always thought about um, basically just taking the name of God and just saying God's name wrong. And so, like, person. And so how you take the name of God and how you say it and the words that you say. And so I remember when I was younger, my, my, my well, even today, my father would um, always have a phrase. He would say, gosh, don't eat me. But it was a little bit more than that. But... So he would, he would say that, and I was like, Dad, Dad, I'm come on, young. I'm like, Dad, don't take the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> and so when I used to go, Dad, Dad, don't do that. And so when people say, I catch up, like, oh, ooh, don't, don't take the Lord's name in vain. But there's so, there's so much more than just that. What I want you to do is I want you to look at this really quick. You shall not take. Has anybody ever taken something from you? So this word is saying take. That means you have it. You take it. It's yours. You've taken it. But look what it says. The name of the Lord. Think about for a moment what God has done throughout history to establish his name. Wow. So we have to remember that. How God feels about his name. And so the word tells us that with a mighty hand. That's right. God delivered Israel. From the Egyptians. With a mighty hand. So his name was so great. That the word also tells us. That as they were traveling through the wilderness. The other nations were trembling in fear. Because they had heard. Not about what Israel had done. But they had heard about what God had done. And so the name of God was being glorified. Throughout the globe. Because of what God had done to establish his name. Amen. Each and everything that you see in the Word of God is God establishing His name above all names. That's right, name above all names. That's true. And there's no name like the name of Jesus. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We have to understand the name because it's talking about God's reputation. And so here it is, He's saying, Don't take it. The name of the Lord, your God, in vain. Look at what it says here. You therefore who teach another, you teach yourself. You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who have more idols, do you rob temples? Romans 2.24. For the name of God is blasphemed among who? Because of who? Because of you as it is written. 
because of their hypocrisy, because of the Pharisees' hypocrisy, because of their actions, it wasn't them that people were making fun of. It wasn't them that people were blaspheming. But who were people blaspheming? The name of God. I want to do this. I want us to understand this word vain a little bit. If I come to you and I say, see, this, this, this is that. really precious, this is valuable, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to take this and I, I want you to hand it to him, okay? You need to be careful. Okay. Put your hand to it, put your hand to it. Two hands, two hands! Hold it with two hands. You got it? Okay, there you go. All right, now hand it, hand it to him. Careful, 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 careful. Come on, man. All right, all right. Take it, push it. <laughs> what did I just do? How are you going to respect something that I'm not respecting? And so what we're telling people who are saying, be careful, be careful, be careful, be gentle, it's holy, it's holy, but then we defile it. We devalue it. That word vain. So don't take the name of God and devalue it. And that's what this scripture is saying. Are we taking the name of God and devaluing it? And back here is talking about in hypocrisy, in our actions, how we represent in our daily lives. Hypocrisy is misrepresentation. Because we're saying one thing, but our lives are presenting something else. God says that's misrepresentation because that's defaming my name. They're blaspheming my name because of your hypocrisy. Because of my hypocrisy. Because when we do things, what do we have on our chest? I'm sitting there cursing you out. You hatting and, and fooling and botting. Why don't you go to church? Oh, praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Ooh, 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 man, you see her? Man, I'll get that in a minute, boy. Ooh, baby, baby! Cat calls. Ladies, get your little circles. Start talking. We have to be so careful. We have to understand that we represent the name of God. I want to go through this. Wow. How are you representing the name of God in your social network? Actually, I want to do this. What are areas in our lives that we may neglect our representation of God? I want us to think about it because when it comes to representation, it, it's something that sometimes we neglect. It's just we get comfortable. And so what are some areas in our lives that we may... Can I tell you somebody? Can you hear me right? Come on now. Come on. Come on. There you go. Be careful, do you represent Christ? <laughs> So what are some areas? I really want to look at this. I really want to evaluate. Make it personal. What are some areas in your own life that you just kind of let your guard down a little bit? That you just, you get in that area and you just not really thinking about parenting. Parenting. I like that. It's, it's so easy to get frustrated. And all of a sudden you start to do things and say things that aren't representing God. Can you kick that block out? What you got? At work. Work. Okay. That, that, that's hard because sometimes people just get on your nerves at work. Man. Absolutely. It's a good, good work. What else we got? School. School. What is it about school and work that it's just like we can just neglect our representation? Trying to be accepted. I like that. Likewise, trying to climb that ladder. I really like that. What are some other areas? Sometimes among friends. Yeah. Among friends? Absolutely. Man, I, I think that's one of the biggest areas. That we neglect because we just feel like I can I can let my hair down I, I can I can be real but that's what we call it I won't be real I'm just gonna be real with you that effing man that ain't being real that's misrepresentation what else do we have make it personal what are some other areas in your life hmm? your eyes okay let's put our eyes that's good that's good body language. Okay, so social, social life. What else do we have? Make it personal. What are some other areas? Because I, I hope that you're writing these down so that way it's something that you're praying over and saying, Lord, how am I representing you in these areas of my life? How am I representing you at the gym? 
Family. 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 Facebook. Oh, Aaron, you put Aaron up there. Just the internet. Thank you so much. You can sit down after that. One of the things is internet is a really big way because again, there's new ways that we don't think about that we represent God. How about text messaging? Well, I'm not really. It's not really me. You know, and you feel. Because you're not talking to somebody, sometimes some of us through text messages and emails and on the internet, we say things that I really wouldn't say to your face. But I, I, I'm hiding behind my keyboard. Or we really aren't that bold. We're really not going to be talking all that sex talking. But, but boy, we get behind a no keyboard, we get behind our, our and we're sexting and, and, and hitting them up. Ooh, I do this. We wouldn't do that. And we feel like, well, is that purpose in God? That's one of the areas I'm just trying to show us that in this new 21st century, there's different ways that we're representing God that we don't really think about it. Who would think that I'm representing God as I text people? Who would think I'm representing God as I tweet people? I have the internet hooked up, and so I brought up Facebook. And so what I want to do is I want to go through everybody's Facebook page. So is that okay? If I do everybody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. How many of us would feel uncomfortable if right now they started putting up, you was at your church and they put your Facebook page up there and they started going through your pictures, Sunday service. Start going through your, your walls, just looking through all your posts. Look at you what your friends post. Because that's still on your wall. <laughs> I'm just saying that if it's on your wall and if I'm trying to get a picture of you, the word says, don't you know that bad company corrupts good morals? Yes, Amen. Come on. Amen. That's the word. Amen. Come on, that's the word. And so, man, we got like 50 billion friends. It's like we take pride in I got 500 friends. What are you saying? I built it up your wall. You took me to build up all my friends. Those aren't friends. Do, you, do we really want to be associated with some of those people? No. no. Right. But, we, but, but here's the thing. We let them into our uh, worlds. And they begin to represent us as they begin to post things on our wall. Mm-hmm. And so, well, how would you feel as if on a Sunday service we started just going through your pictures that you post? I'm just trying to help, help us to understand that there's such a, there's a bigger picture than us. But the bigger picture is that we are a light. And everything we do, we carry the name of Christ with us. As we walk through these halls, as we send a text message. Just imagine right now, you send a text message, and every, at the end of it, you say, Jesus Christ. How would that transform? Maybe what you've seen. How would that transform if that's how you end every letter, every post, in the name of Jesus? That's right. Praise the Lord. Would that change maybe how and what you might say? That's good. Misrepresentation is self-worship or a form of self-worship. People are being mindful of God. Because I'm really saying, I really don't care. I'm not thinking about God. I'm thinking about who? Me and how I'm being represented, how what I can gain. And so I'm not really concerned about how I'm representing God. And so we have no idea that misrepresentation is actually a form of self worship. And so we have to understand that God says, I want you to be mindful. We need to care. It's, it, that, it's just effort. It's just saying, Lord, I'm going to think about the things that I say, the things that I do. Before I go any further, I just want to stop for a minute. I know somebody here is like, come on. Come on. I mean, it ain't that serious. When I start talking about Facebook, somebody in here is just like, come on. No one has anything to say? 
I mean, I, I'll just I'll just throw that out there. And uh, the Lord made it very clear to me to not have Facebook. Just throwing it out there. Um, well, you won't find me on Facebook. You won't find me on nothing like that because it's really it becomes something that, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, well, you can minister on it. Well, they tell me, but you got you man, you can hook up with all those old friends and well, well, minister well, to them and stuff. Yeah. I, I'm just, I received that from the Lord. I, I'm not Wait, that's one of the things that's really I important. Received that from that's one of the things that's really important because our, our young sister over here, she gave a testimony last week. I mean, she first um, how. Uh, God had put it on her heart to shut down Facebook. I'm not here to say, and I just put it on this brother's heart. I'm not here to say Facebook is just a tool. There's anything, a lot of things in this world we can take and we can abuse it. That's right. That's right. And that's just one thing that we can take it and abuse it. And so if it's not a stumbling block to you, if you can maintain it and represent Christ in a good fashion, and God's not saying shut it down, you're good. Amen. If God spoke to him and spoke to him and spoke to her and said, I want you to cut out Facebook, you know what they need to do? They need to cut it out. Because that's what God is speaking to them. God might speak to you and say, you know what? I don't want you to go in the malls anymore. And why? I don't know. Maybe you just have a shopping fanatic. You just, a shop- you just can't help it. So you're just addicted to the mall. You spit out. And so God says, I don't want you to go in malls anymore. And we're actually going to get to this. Because how does that begin to relate to one another? How do we work through those things as God begins to speak to him and God begins to speak to him? And how do we work through those things, especially in representing God? What was your... No, when you were talking about the Facebook, when Brother Chris was talking about how the Lord spoke to him, when I first went on Facebook, I was like, oh, just going crazy, you know, answering all kinds of things, and just uh, involved in Facebook. And um, then one of my friends came but I moved from one area to another area. I was in Boston, and now I'm down here. One of my friends out on here, she testified about how I led her to the Lord. And that touched my, that touched my heart. So I turned immediately from that point up to now. Every time I got an opportunity to get on Facebook, I put scripture on there, got up to this, I prayed, I became a life. Mm-hmm. Look at what Romans 14 20 says. It says, Do not tear apart the what? The work of God. The work of God over what you eat. Remember, there is nothing wrong with these things in themselves, but it is wrong to eat anything if it makes another person what? Do not eat meat or drink wine or do anything else if it might cause another Christian to stumble. This is taking representation to a whole different level. Because what it's doing is is making me, is forcing me to think more about others than it is about myself. What, what's happening is, is the Jews and people that were, the, and the Gentiles and new believers, they were going back and forth and they were arguing about, well, can you eat this and, and can you eat that? And so here it is, he's trying to help them to understand. It's like, wait a minute. If this person is going to stumble, if it's a stumbling block to them, then don't eat meat in front of them, even though you know you're perfectly fine. I bless this to the Lord, and I, I know I'm not under coming. I know there's nothing wrong with me going to Facebook. But I'm not going to do it around him. I'm not going to go on Facebook maybe around him. How is it going to look if somebody's struggling with an al- being an alcohol? And I'm going to say, well, hey, man, you want to come over here? Let's go to TJ Fridays, and we're going to sit like right in the bar and watch the game. How's that going to work? And so it's saying, in representing God, we have to be mindful. We have to step out of our comfort zone. Look at what the scripture says. Now, we who are strong ought to bear what? The weaknesses of those without strength and not just please ourselves. Again, that's something that we're always looking at. Well, there's nothing wrong with me doing that. And we get attitudes whether or not if it's people in the church, whether or not it's people outside the church, because we begin to feel like, well, I'm fine with this. There's nothing wrong with this. Yeah, there, for you it might not be. But are you strong enough in Christ to think about others and bear up their weaknesses? That's good. And we don't view it that way. And 
as we represent God, that's what God is concerned about. God is concerned about how we are representing Him before others that they might be edified. Let's continue with Each of us is to please His neighbor for His good and to what? His edification. For even Christ did not please Himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. God is concerned about drawing people to Him. That's why representation is so important. That's good. Because God said you're a light, and I want you to represent people. I want you to represent me before the people that they might see you and be drawn to me. That they might be drawn to Christ. That's what this is all about. That's what God is so, so concerned about. But we can't be so holy and so into, oh, I'm fine with this, that we're not thinking about others because it's about others. And again, we can go through some of these things where we can be at family, and so we have some family to where we're so holy that we can't reach them. Wow. But God says, hey, I want you to be a light. We, we get around family and we act a fool. And they're like, man, I thought, I thought she go to church. I thought he go to church. He's going to come over here and try to preach that. Now, he's going to come and preach that Jesus stuff. He just smoked the pun when he's out back. Yes, right. That's the truth, man. That's right. Weren't you just clubbing with me just last week? I saw you I saw you doing Tootsie Roll. And, you know, Tootsie Roll. I don't know how they do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that should be Christians. Look at this. Look, look at this where this takes representation. Christians should be willing to forego liberties. Liberties, what's that word? Freedoms. Yeah, right. There's some things that we're free to do. Guess what? If you want Facebook, go get Facebook. There's nothing wrong with that. Whatever it might be, we have some freedoms. There's some things that we can do, but are we willing to forego some liberties for the sake of others? Are we, really, are we willing to be able to put our agenda on hold for others? And that's what you have with Christ as that perfect example. We go back to the scripture. For even Christ did not what? Please himself. Christ was the perfect example. Who, here we have God, who took off all that he had and took on the limitations of man. That he might reach people for Christ. Is that humility? Can we be that humble? That though, yeah, you, you have this liberty, you have this freedom, you have this power, but are we that humble that we can take those things off to reach people? Misrepresentation pushes people away from God. Amen. And he takes that person. Look at the second part of it. Exodus. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. God takes that person. God is in play. God says, you are representing me. Take it serious because I'm going to hold you accountable. Look what Jesus says here in Mark. It says, but whoever causes one of these little ones who, what? Believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if the milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Wow. Now, there's a lot of things that I've read Jesus and heard Jesus say, but this is some of the strongest stuff you will hear Jesus say. Because he's serious. Yeah. God is concerned about people. And he's saying he wants us to be concerned about people. And not be a stumbling block. Now look at the context. Look what happens next. <laughs> if your hand causes you to sin, do what? Cut it off. This is really interesting because we hear this verse a lot. We'll talk about it. Well, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. But we normally are applying that to ourselves. But here this is talking about others. And how our sin might be causing other people to stumble. Mm -hmm. That's the context. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life man rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Wow. <laughs> we have to be willing to cut some things off for other people. 
Amen. Because God's going to hold all of us accountable to how we represent Him. And it's so easy in this 21st century to, to lose that. To, to, to get distracted, to begin to neglect it. How are you representing the name of God in your social network? I want to just end with this. I'm not, God didn't put this on my heart. I'm not saying this to beat us up. I, I, I really don't want this to be like a, a beat up session and you just feel like, man, I just got beat up. That's not, that's not the point. Why I'm going over this is so that we can just be mind. Yes. That was the key one. It's just being mind. That we're thinking about God. Before we press in, we think about God. Before we press sin, we're thinking. Before we speak, you said earlier, be quick to hear, slow to speak. Slow to speak. As we're beginning to get dressed, we just be mindful. As we look at the places that we go, we're just being mindful. Because I want us to understand that we're part of a bigger picture. You're part of something bigger than just you. But we have a bigger purpose. And we want to make sure that we're available, that we're a tool, that we're an instrument. That we're part of that plan. We don't want to neglect. Because we never know. You have no idea when God wants to use you. You have no idea who is watching you. And all it takes... Let me say this. There are more people who won't go to church because of people. Because of what people have done to them inside the church. Supposedly Christians and them having their attitudes, forming their cliques. Instead of them having a heart, people have been hurt from being in a church. And they say, I won't go to a church ever again. God is saying, I'm going to hold you accountable. Yeah. Yeah. And so we just have to be mindful. This doesn't mean that all of a sudden we start doing simple things for people. Because we always obey God rather than me. But what this is saying is in part of our obedience, sometimes our pride, because we have liberties. Because we can do it. Gets in the way of ministry. And that's where it becomes a problem. Paul said, I become all things to all people that I might Wins. gain the more. Yes, hallelujah. It's a good word. And so it's about people. It's about touching people. Sometimes we can get so caught up in clicks and in events that we're missing touching people. Wow. That we're not people minded anymore. And so we go to churches and we're like, man, well, what events do you guys have? Well, what, what do you guys have at this church? Well, I, I want this and I want that. And, and, and we start getting up them. Well, when are we going to have more events? When are we going to do more stuff in the, the Chafee, you know, the Christians at Chafee? And we're looking at events instead of saying, man, how can we touch you? That's good. Because that's what we're here for. Not to do events. Now events are nice. But we can't be so into the events that we're missing that personal touch. You have an opportunity to touch somebody every single time you come on this campus. That's right. Just by your walk. Oh, because somebody's watching. Amen. Somebody's so watching. Yeah. watching. And every single time you have an opportunity to touch somebody, you're sitting next to somebody. And they're looking at you. They're watching you while you're sitting in the They're watching you while you're at work. And one day they might say, man, I just want to know, what, what do you have? Man, I, I, I saw that you, you broke up with your man, and, and man, I just saw that you, you lost your job, and, and you're still smiling. Why? Yeah, right. Is our testimony, is our life in such a way that we can speak on the name of Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready for that? Praise the Lord. Or do we look just like the world when we lose a job? 
Do we look just like the world when we don't get a class? Oh, man, I'm living out. We're depressed. That's representing God. If we were acting depressed all the time, I don't want to serve your God. That's right. That's good. Come on, speak it. Speak it. And so we want to represent it. Because we're part of a bigger picture. Do you understand what your purpose is? No matter what the world might say, you have a purpose. Yes. And we have to understand that. We have to live in that. We have to be excited about That's it. That's right. Hallelujah. No weapon for it. What I want to do is I just want to... Um, I just want you to take a moment. I just want you to... Just close your eyes. Yes, thank you. Bless you. And I, I just want you to take some of the things that we've talked about. Just really talk to God and ask God. How do you think you're interested? Yes. It would be a shame if we came here and we walked out different. If we didn't take one thing that we can carry with us. You might not be able to remember everything, but is there one thing that you can just take and you can walk away with? Too often we, we don't take time just to meditate. So I just want you to take a, a moment. I want you to talk to God. God's talking to you about something. Yes, God. Yes. Well, the generation embrace this. Come on, come on. Here I am. Here I am. Yes, Lord. Here I stand. What's God says?